The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. From 13 City, Uniform Lift Rope of Length L hangs on a peg a distance L off the ground. After the rope is on the peg, left of the peg, half on the right. So we'll measure from 13 Feet of the Rope so that one side is a little longer than the other and proceeds to slide off the peg. No friction. Uh, passes are going when one end, end reaches the ground. So, basically, we have peg, the rope, the ground. So it starts off right here at L over 2, where each of these lengths is going to be L over 2. Ends up basically kind of like having two different two different ropes hanging there attached together and both of them start with no velocity so they both have potential energy so we here now when you're dealing with the potential energy what matters is where the center of mass is so if we're looking at this half of the rope and this half of the rope, the center of mass is going to be right here at three fourths of the L to start off with. And because neither of them is moving originally, they both have potential energy. So we can say that initially we have this potential energy, and then finally we're going to have a both potential and kinetic. So on the initial side of the equation, we say m mass of the rope times gravity times the height of the center mass above our dam, which I'm going to pick as the bottom line, saying there's no potential energy right at ground level. So we have mg times 3 fourths L for the one rope. Then we have the exact same thing for the other rope. So I'm just going to multiply that by 2. So you just add them together, it ends up being the exact same thing. That is going to equal to the sum of the potential and kinetic energy to this guy, and this one's just a little bit more complicated. So remember, we still have our two chunks of rope. So this guy's center of mass is right here. So he's going to have a center of mass at, M at uh, L over 4, halfway from 0 to L over 2. So mg times L over 4 plus this guy, his center of mass really didn't change. It went up and then it went back down. So we have this is mg times 3 fourths L, only one of them this time. Then we have our kinetic energy, okay? Both of them have a kinetic energy equal to 1 half mv squared. They both have the same, exact same velocity because it's the same rope, okay? But you have to include it twice because we're looking at this rope separate from this rope. So we're going to have two kinetic energies, same velocity, same mass. We have two of them because we separated it into two ropes. And this is going to be our energy equation. So, of course, as usual, the masses end up canceling, which is nice. Uh, our lengths don't because we don't have one in this term. We can drop the two and the one half. And I'm sure there's going to be some other reductions we can do, but let's just leave it at that for now. So, we have two times g, three fourths l, is going to be equal to. Say we have G three four cell and then we have two G three four cell. So we can cancel this out and cancel that with two and just leave us with one on this side by subtracting this one over here. Then we can say that G times three four cell, we can subtract G times L over four from that and end up with uh, basically one half G L G times L over two, three four cell minus one four cell all times G. Can equal to V 
squared, or e is the same equal to the square root of pl over 2. Okay? And this is going to be our correct answer for this question. So, on the story, basically, make sure you, when you have heights and velocities, and that's all you're really concerned about, definitely use energy. And remember the heights, when you have not just a point mass or a small particle, it's always going to be wherever the center of mass is. Okay? And for most things in this class, they're uniform objects, so it's just going to be right in the middle. And that's how you solve this problem. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu.